hard to believe it's the end of another decade and 2020 is only a few days away. Now 2020 has a lot of excitement for Mustang enthusiasts. The GT500 is already here and arguably the greatest Mustang ever produced. We also know 2020 is going to bring the Mustang Mach-E. It's going to be the first time the Mustang name is used on a four-door electric SUV, which has a lot of owners kind of up in the air whether they like that Mustang name or not. Today we're not going to look at the future, we're going to take a look at the past and the last 10 years of the Mustang. Now, while some 2010 owners eventually did regret their purchase, when the 2010 Mustang first came out, it was a very, very popular car. It carried over the three-valve engine, which was a good engine for the time. They sounded great, easy to upgrade, and the 2010 made 315 horsepower. Now, the 2010 Mustang got a whole new look, a new front end, new back end, and a freshened interior. Your three options were the GT at 315 horsepower, the 4-liter V6 at 210 horsepower, and if you want to power, the GT500 had the carryover 5.4, making 540 horsepower, making the most powerful engine in 2010. Now, 2011 was a huge year for the Mustang. From the outside, the car looked basically the same, but the big changes were under the hood. The introduction of the now legendary Coyote engine. Now, the Coyote brought the 5-liter badges back to the fenders, and brought a dual overhead cam four valve engine under the hood. Now, this obviously is a 2013 version, but in 2011 it made 412 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque, which is a lot more power than the V8s made in 2010. Even adding more insult to injury, the V6 Mustang got to 3.7 liter, making 305 horsepower, almost as much as the previous GT. In addition to the higher horsepower engines, we had two new transmission options for 2011, the MT82 six-speed manual and the 6R80 six-speed automatic. Now, if you're looking for power though, the top dog was still the GT500. Its 5.4 liter was now aluminum, it made 550 horsepower, and the new performance pack option would add Brembo brakes, better tires, and a host of other upgrades. For 2012, the V6 and GT basically remained unchanged except for some color options. The GT500 also basically the same with the exception of the optional Recaro seats. The big news for 2012 was the return of an iconic name in the Ford family, and that is the Boss 302. Now the Boss 302 is not just a stickered up GT. This car featured a better flowing intake, CNC ported heads, and forged internals making 444 horsepower. Add the 19-inch wheels and improved suspension, and the Boss 302 was a serious track car. For 2013, the Mustang picked up 8 horsepower going from 412 to 420 on the GT, but the biggest news was the facelift. A new front bumper with GT500 styling, LED headlights, and probably the best looking taillights ever put on a Mustang. But the bigger news for 2013 was the GT500. Now powered by a 5.8 liter supercharged engine, it made 662 horsepower, making it the most powerful Mustang ever produced. This car also did 202 miles an hour, making it still the fastest Mustang ever made. Now, in keeping with previous tradition, the 2014 Mustang should have been the 50th anniversary of the Mustang. Ford decided to save that for 2015. So the 2014 was basically a carryover from 13. A few colors changed, the Boss 302 did go away, but overall the 14 was again just basically a carryover as Ford was all aboard the 2015 Mustang. Now 2015 was another huge year for the Mustang. The introduction of the S550 chassis. This took the Mustang from a pony car to a lot of people felt was actually a world-class sports car. Now three engine options were available in 2015. Top of the line was gonna be the five liter, which was the new Gen 2 version, making 435 horsepower. The 3.7 liter V6 was carried over at 305 horsepower. And an all new turbo 2.3 liter came out known as the EcoBoost, making 310 horsepower. Now, all three options available in a coupe or a convertible. And for 2015, Ford decided this was the year they wanted to celebrate the anniversary. Now this car here is one of the 2015 50th anniversary limited edition cars. And they made 1964 in either the Kona Blue or the Wimbledon White with a bunch of special features. Ford also had a 50 year package, which was available on the EcoBoost V6 or GT Mustang. Now, the S550 chassis was lower, it was wider, featured independent rear suspension, really, really a completely different car than the previous years. These were huge, huge sellers for Ford. Now the GT500 was gone in 2015, it was replaced with the GT350. 
The GT350 had a 5.2 liter flat plane crank that revved to 8,000 RPM and made 526 horsepower naturally aspirated. There's also an R model available, which added additional features to the GT350. Now, the 2015 Mustang being a brand new Mustang front to back, 2016 and 2017 were just carryovers. There were a couple color changes, a few small options like hood turn signals in 2016, but for the most part, the 16 and 17 were identical to the 15, with Ford doing their next major change in 2018. At first glance, the 2018 Mustang was just a cosmetic refresh, and there's a lot more than that going on. Now, as far as looks, you got new taillights, new fenders, new hood, and a new front bumper, but most of the difference was under the hood, and specifically in the chassis itself. Now, under the hood, with new Gen 3 Coyote, making 460 horsepower. This can be made now to a 10-speed automatic, allowing these cars to run at the 11s bone stock. Options like Magnaride suspension, digital dash, and the active exhaust really took the Mustang to the next level. Now for 2018, you had two options. You had the GT or the EcoBoost with the V6 going away, and the GT350 was also still available. Now here we are in the present time, 2019. The 2019 Mustang was pretty much just a carryover. Now we had better stereo, you know, rev matching on the manual strands, but the cars themselves were simply just carryovers, as are the 2020, as a lot of Ford's focus was on the new GT500. It's really been quite a decade for the Ford Mustang. We've seen the GT go from 310 horsepower to 460, the GT500 from 540 to 760, and the V6 went away in favor of the four-cylinder turbo. Now we know electric Mustangs are definitely in the future, and the Mach-E's are right around the corner as well, so it should be another amazing decade for our favorite pony car.